This is the regular meeting of the Mobile City Council, Tuesday, April the 4th. Please stand for our invocation, led by Pastor Barry Jones, Senior Man of Ministries, and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Shall we, shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we ask for your divine protection. We ask for your wisdom. We ask for your guidance in today's council meeting. God, permit to counsel men and women as they make their decisions and cover them by the blood of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Roll call, President Small. Here. Vice President Gregory. Here. Council Member Penn. Here. Council Member Carroll. Here. Council Member Reynolds. Here. Council Member Days. Here. Council Member Jones. Here. Statement of rules. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see everybody at our April the 4th meeting. Uh, at this meeting, we do have rules. At this time, I ask if anyone have any type of electronic device, including a cell phone, please at, that, at this time, Put on the off or the barbary position. The off or the barbary position. Any person desiring to address the council must sign in indicating the resolution, the ordinance, appeal, or agenda item, public hearing item before entering the meeting. Uh, when addressing the council, the speaker must state his or her name and address. Any person desiring to speak to the council on a non-agenda item must contact the city clerk office no later than 2 o'clock p.m. the Thursday prior to the council meeting. The subject that he or she wishes to express must be identified and pertain to the city of Mobile business. Any person who has not given proper notice to the city clerk office and wishes to speak on a non-agenda item would not be allowed to address this council. Each speaker is allowed three minutes to address the council. A bell was sound to indicate the end of two minutes. One minute remains for summarizing. The second bell indicates that the time has expired. When addressing the council, there has to be no personal address to any individual council members. All statements are to be made to the chair who will recognize any council member who wishes to respond. To maintain decorum, there would be no undue applause and or public outcry allowed. Madam City Clerk. Communications from the mayor. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. We appreciate you being here. I have really just one announcement and then um, two proclamations to read. The announcement has to do with a meeting that will be held uh, this Friday, excuse me, this Thursday evening in Africatown regarding the Africatown Welcome Center. Uh, it's at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Robin Hope Community Center. It'll be the first of many opportunities for members of the Africatown community and other Mobilians to provide uh, their input on the design of this welcome center. Uh, this is the initial public meeting and be focused on broad design concepts such as form, flow, architecture, and environment. So for those who are interested in participating, that's the Robert Hope Community Center uh, this Thursday evening at 6 o'clock p.m. I have two proclamations to read, uh, and both of them have to do with uh, Sexual Awareness Month. And the first one uh, will be presented to uh, individuals, uh, representatives from Lifelines Counseling. And I think some of the attendees are Laurie Rowland, Grace Williams, Kelsey Brown, Ashley Rocker, Tyler Riley, and Kat Loveless. Uh, so which one of y'all will be receiving? So if you can just go to the podium and I'll, uh, I'll meet you up there, okay? Okay. 
So the proclamation reads, uh, the Rape Crisis Center has provided comfort and support to sexual assault vi victims in this community for 45 years, facilitating awareness and education while offering high quality assistance to those in need. And whereas the Rape Crisis Center provided support to sexual assault victims and their families through direct services, prevention education, and professional training to all citizens of the city of Mobile, and whereas in 2022, the center provided 473 crisis, crisis phone calls, 146 hospital calls, office visits, follow-up victim support calls, court advocacy, family-friendly support, clothing bank, dolls, bears given to the child victims, transportation, information, and referrals to the community agencies and various other services. Now, therefore, I, William S. Stimson, the 108th mayor of the city of Mobile, to hereby proclaim April 2023 as Sexual Assault Awareness Month in the city of Mobile. Thank you for what y'all do and congratulations. I just want to say that on behalf of Lifelines Counseling Services and the Rape Crisis Center, thank you all for your continued support. Yeah, thank you. So when you have this many coasties show up in a meeting, it doesn't go unnoticed. And uh, Captain Mullins, I'll say that uh, we always appreciate what you do, but I have a proclamation to read for y'all. So Captain Mullins, if you will come and anyone else that you think should join us at the uh, podium, and then after this, what we can do is we can go out into the uh, lobby and we'll take a picture of, of all of us together, okay? So if you can come join me. And I see they follow orders, Captain. It's a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> and so this reads, when a sexual assault awareness month is intended to draw attention to the fact that sexual violence remains an intolerable violent crime with public health implications for every person in Alabama, and whereas rape, sexual assault, and violence impact women, children, and men of all racial, cultural, and economic backgrounds, many of whom can do, can and experience, can and do experience acquaintance rape, stranger rape, gang rape, serial rape, date rape, sexual assault, incest, stalking, ritual abuse, sexual harassment, and child sexual molestation, prostitution, and pornography. And whereas we must work together to educate our entire population about what can be done to prevent sexual assault support survivors and their significant others, and ensure that survivors are not re-victimized, whereas staff and volunteers of victim support programs in Alabama work year-round to encourage every person to advocate for victims and survivors' rights, plus the restoration of peace in every home. Now, therefore, we as citizens and community members of Mobile have a duty to promote an environment that is free from all forms of sexual violence. And we have an obligation to not tolerate any form of sexual violence or threat of sexual violence within the confines of our influences, which includes threatening behavior that results in physical or emotional injury to any person. And we have a responsibility to teach our children, youth, and adults to become aware of the impact of sexual violence in our community. And we commit ourselves to take action and vow to take a stand against sexual violence in our homes and community. Now, therefore, I, William S. Stimson, the 108th mayor of the city of Mobile, do hereby proclaim Sexual Assault Awareness and Prevention Month uh, in the city of Mobile. And I, along with the members of the Mobile City Council, the Mobile Community Victims Advocates, and Coast Guard Sector Mobile Victim Advocates, do hereby declare that each day of the year is an opportunity to create change for the future done on this day, April 4th, 2023. Captain Mullins, thank you for what you all do. Thank you for your real service. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you get this, Captain? You hold it. You need to make a couple of minutes. Thank you. Thank you.
So uh, thank you, Mayor Stimson, and thank you to the council for your continued partnership and support on many initiatives. Uh, sexual assault prevention is something that the U.S. Coast Guard takes very seriously within its workforce, and we have established and continue to improve our programs to prevent sexual assault. Uh, in addition to that, we are also undertaking an effort uh, that started earlier this year is to now prevent sexual assault and prevention in the maritime industry. Uh, so that is a new initiative that the Coast Guard is pursuing beside, along with continuing to pursue uh, the prevention of sexual assault within our workforce. So thank you all. Thank you, Mayor Simpson, and I thank you all for your time. Thank, thank you. Mr. President, that concludes my remarks. Uh, Council, and I also like to say uh, to the audience and the citizens of Mobile, today is the uh, CEO and the mayor of Mobile birthday. So let's just wish him a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Good morning. If I could ask the uh, representatives from the Mobile County Health Department to come down and join me at the podium uh, this morning, as this is the uh, National Public Health Week, uh, and our individuals uh, do such an extremely great job here in Mobile, uh, especially over the last two or three years, especially dealing with COVID and all the other things that we've had to deal here with in Mobile, uh, and especially in areas where uh, in District 2, we've had some extreme consequences that needed to be handed out for some public, or I should say public living facilities where we really needed some help. So today I'd like to present this proclamation to the Mobile County Public Health Department, and it reads, whereas the week of April 3rd, 2023 is National Public Health Week, and the theme for National Public Health Week in 2023 is centering and celebrating cultures and health. And whereas the goal of National Public Health Week in 2023 is to recognize the contributions of public health in improving the health of the people of the U.S. and achieving health equity, and whereas in 2020, the life expectancy at birth for the population of the U.S. declined by one and a half years, which is the largest drop in life expectancy since 1943. And whereas many of the leading causes of death for individuals in the United States results from chronic conditions, which are among the most common, costly, and preventable of all health challenges, and whereas racial and ethnic minority populations in the U.S. continue to experience disparities in the burden of illness and death and compared, as compared with the entire population of the United States, whereas death from, death from homicides costs the economy of the United States billions of dollars, and the violence of homicides caused social and emotional distress, community trauma, injury, disability, depression, anxiety, and post-traumatic stress disorder. And whereas an estimated one in seven children in the United States experience child abuse and neglect, with 1,840 children dying of abuse and neglect in 2019, whereas public health professionals help communities prevent, pre prepare for the magnitude and recovery from the impact of a full range of health threats, includes disease outbreaks such as COVID-19, the pandemic, wildfires, flooding, severe storms, and other disasters, including disasters caused by human activity and public health agencies. Whereas public health professionals collaborate with partners outside of the health sector, including city planners, transportation officials, educational officials, and private sector businesses, recognizing that other sectors can influence health outcomes. Whereas efforts to adequately support public health and the prevention of disease and injury can continue to transform a health system focused on 
treating illnesses into, into a health system focused on preventing disease and injury and promoting a wellness and now therefore we, the Mobile City Council, do hereby support the goals and ideas of National Public Health Week done this day in the city of Mobile for April 2023. So thank you guys so much for everything. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Mobile County Health Department and Dr. Michael could not be here today. We'd like to thank uh, Councilman Carroll, uh, Council President uh, C.J. Smalls, and the Mayor and the rest of the City Council um, for this proclamation in support of the National uh, Health, National Public Health uh, Week. Our theme centering and celebrating cultures and health. There are many strong words uh, to describe whether our public health is in crisis, but however, um, the continued open dialogue and the powerful access by our community is essential for health, safety, and the well-being of our community. Um, as we move forward, uh, we try to uh, make sure that we don't continue to have some of the impediments that uh, keep us from having access to substance abuse treatment, uh, mental health services, basic primary care, and women's health. We must continue to support these services as well as community-based programs. And we believe that if we support these programs that uh, we will be able to reduce the violence and increase access to standard care in the city of Mobile. Thank you. Yeah, thank you and congratulations and appreciate everything you all do for the community. If I might, Mr. President, um, while you're still here, I, I too want to thank you for all that you all do in the community. Every time you're asked to be at an event, you, you come, you, you bring materials, you bring your mobile trucks out to help people in communities, and I just really appreciate everything that you do. So thank you for coming and being a part of this today, and uh, we look forward to continuing working with you all to help everyone in the city for better health. Adoption of the agenda. So moved. Second. And popped and moved in second. And in the discussions. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Agenda is adopted. Appeals. We have requests for a waiver of the noise ordinance on May the 27th in Mill Street Park, April 22nd, Ursuline on Ursuline Drive, May the 6th, and July the 1st in Langham Park. So moved. Second. And popped and moved in second. And in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <clears throat> Bill passes. Public hearings. Today is the public hearing proposing an amendment to tax increment financing district one in the city of Mobile, authorizing the preparation of an amendment to the tax increment financing district one plan, authorizing the president of the city council to perform certain actions required by Alabama law and directing the publication of this resolution. This opened up the public hearing for this particular item. Is anyone present that would like to address the council? You may do so by coming down to the podium, stating your name and your address, please. Thank you. My name is Preston Bolt, 108 Lavert Avenue. And I'm here to speak in favor of the proposed amendment to the TIF plan. Uh, the concept of tax increment financing is to uh, encourage uh, redevelopment of areas that are in need of it. Uh, it allows for the use of additional tax revenues from that area to be directed to improve facilities and services within the area. And it is therefore a self-funding arrangement uh, whereby only the area in which the improvements are made are funding those. 
It accomplishes this by establishing a base of tax revenues from the district at the time of its formation, and that base continues to be distributed to all the taxing authorities in the same manner as before the date of formation. The current proposal uh, or is, is to amend the plan. Uh, the, the, this hearing addresses that amendment, not the formation of a district, uh, and therefore somewhat different. Uh, the existing district covers the area within the Henry Aaron Loop, uh, extending down to Texas Street Park in that area and the area of the industrial development along the river on both sides of the river. Uh, and as you are aware, that existing TIF was formed almost 30 years ago uh, and terminates at the end of this fiscal year, September 30. Uh, last year, the legislature amended the TIF statute uh, to allow for an amendment to the plan that would continue the TIF in existence uh, for a longer period of time while using the same tax base. Uh, the statute requires that the city go through the same procedures that it would if it were forming a district, and this hearing constitutes a part of that. Uh, the benefits of the existing downtown TIF district have been uh, numerous over the past 29 plus years, funding many important projects. Uh, and this new amendment will allow the city to adopt a plan which will eventually come before the council and to address new and improved priorities over the next few years. Uh, that plan, once it is approved by you, uh, can continue in existence. Thank you very much. Is anyone else would like to address the council on this particular said item? If not, this public hearing is closed. Public hearing to declare the structures at 282 Laurel Drive, 650 St. Michael Street, 928 Nelly Street, 4400 Government Boulevard, 5500 Kaiser Court as public nuisances and ordering them demolished. Is anyone present that would like to address the council on these particular said items? If so, you may come down to the podium, stating your name and your address. Charles Dent, uh, 1516 Richland Road West, Mobile, 36695. Um, addressing the property on 4400 Government Street, um, that is um, one of the things that happened in this process is this building called a fire on October the 1st, uh, 2022. On October the 4th, my, I lost my daughter, so I was dealing with cancer, her dealing with her cancer situation during the whole year. But basically what I wanted to do with that part, that per, uh, picture, property was not for just a, a church building. It was not going to be for that. It was going to be more like a mental health mall and be able to address veterans and homelessness and address their behaviors and how we can change that as we continue to work with Waterfront and Ransom Ministry here in this particular area to try to duplicate the same thing in Westmobile. So at the current time, I have any other plans to deal with it in that sense because I haven't met with anybody else because I was dealing with the grief of my daughter and so my wife and I was talking about when we we're going to do it again. And that's why I want to address the building on 4400 government. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ronda, do you have a... I'm sorry, Mr. President. I was. Uh... Did you have anything that you want to address? No, with? sir, I do not. Did... In the question, it's okay. All right. So. Pastor Dent, so are you asking, what, what are you asking, Pastor Dent? At least give me three months uh, on that particular property because um, now that I have certain things in place, um, because everybody, because I was trying to sell the building at one time to a veteran organization so we can be able to address the veterans at VA that's so close to that location. And the second thing is to create a place that we can look at different options if we need to demolish the building, because I was going to look at the program that what they were doing in Birmingham to see can we duplicate that here in Mobile for homeless and things of that nature. Uh, Mr. Davis, 90 days is okay or? Um, but, Mr. President? Yes, sir. Um, how long have you owned this building? Um, about two years. I can tell you that it is a problem right now. It's an eyesore. It's got a homeless encampment going on in it now. The reason it caught on fire is because it was left dilapidated and homeless people were allowed to create fires inside the structure. And 
you know, it caught on fire, and it's a it's a public health risk. I mean, that are those are just the facts. Um, <clears throat> I can tell you that residents in the area want this building to be torn down. I mean, that's just where we're at with it. Um, I don't know what can be done in three months' time to to mitigate this issue. Uh, it's in bad shape. You, you're well aware. I'm sorry that um, you know we found ourselves in this position uh, to be in an adverse position with the surrounding community, and it's continuing to be a problem. We really haven't seen much improvement. So I, I don't know what holding it over for 90 days will will serve. You know, I don't know what purpose it would serve. So um, you know, I, I'm in favor of of moving forward with the demolition um as it is so I, I it's just where i'm at i think the community at, a, at large is is ready for some action to be taken and and it's sort of the government's role in all this to make sure that action is taken and this is one of the steps so even if it's declared today i'm sure mr dolphin ball would extend you the opportunity to get a building permit and all that sort of stuff but i don't want to delay it any further all right may i ask a question uh sure can i address um before we even purchased the building, homeless people were living in it. And there was never, ever anything brought up to the city and the community about demolishing that building. Not one thing. And it was entirely filled with homeless people. But when we came into the area, we just wanted to address that population so that we can do that. But when the pandemic, after whatever, people just, you know, because I tried to sell it to a veteran organization so they can do the exact same thing that we were talking about doing. And I do agree with you, it is a nuisance because if you know my heart towards this city, I think everything we do is a reflection of the city and the city does reflect us and that does reflect me and my character and my ability to do things. I totally agree with you. It's a public nuisance to me, not just that building, but other buildings as well, but I agree with you 100%. And if I cannot produce it in 90 days, I'll tell you to tear it down. Uh, thank you again, and I appreciate the services you do provide. And um, I'd ask the council that we move forward with voting this today. Let me ask one question. Pastor, you come back down? What do you think you can do in, with the 90 days, Pastor? If you well, at least find some funding to make sure I'm able to do it. Find a funder to be able to. To do it, yeah, because one of these things do is, is how to, it's how to tear it down totally or being able to create that mall that I want to create for homeless people to get the help they need so that we can address that issue in that particular area. Because it was just that building alone, I can understand it, but it's not just that building, Mr. President. Uh, hello, Mr. Reynolds, Ms. Gregory, Mr. Carroll, and then you, Mr. Reynolds. Thank you. Uh, when you were speaking, I heard you mention um, Ransom Ministries and some of the uh, programs that are being provided. Um, and I know you also mentioned that, of course, in the pandemic, and then you had some uh, responsibilities with your, your sister. So there's been a time delay for you, apparently, in uh, trying to do some renovations to the building. So I, I know um, Councilman Small asked what you thought you could do within 90 days, but it, could you elaborate some on what your vision is, and then what, in reality, you think you could do in 90 days? Well, the key thing is being able to get the plans like we were planning on do before because the people who were with me abandoned me from the project and be able to do that again. And because there are certain people who will help us get certain things done. Um, and that was the number one thing about it, making sure that building is safe and it is secure and that homeless people are not living in it. Because I do agree with it is a nuisance. I, I, you know, I don't disagree with that at all. But I just want to put some effort towards it to see can I secure that. And if I can't do it in 90 days, you know, I agree with demolishing it. Mr. President, uh, hello, Mr. Jones, Mr. Carroll, Mr. Reynolds, and Mr. Jones. Um, you know, I, Rev is not my policy to interfere with uh, other districts, and this is in District 4, uh, but property rights are an immense issue for me, and if the property owner is trying to do all that they can to repair and 
recover, uh, I think that time should be granted. Uh, but I'm, whatever this council chooses to do, uh, I love to give you the time, you know, especially when you're trying to do what's right and save something that belongs to you, where you're trying to keep from starting over from zero, spending a million dollars or better for something that large, uh, because someone else thinks that it should come down immediately is is sometimes harmful to the person that's trying to do what's right on both ends and may not have the resources to do things as fast as some other people can. So uh, I'm completely on your side trying to help you uh, get to where you can be, but there has to be some type of, of proof uh, that it can be done and that it can be moved forward in the correct way as quickly as possible. Mr. President. Yes. This property is declared, which is my goal to have it declared today. Uh, demolition does not start immediately. There is time for your organization to, you know, come up with a plan, acquire permits, you know, take immediate action. I mean, that's where we're at with residents, you know, that this community is in dire need of immediate action on this. So. If you have the ability to, to take immediate action, the opportunity is there. I just don't want to delay it any further from declaring. So, you know, I'm in full support once again to declare this thing today. Okay. Mr. Jones. All right. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Could, could we hear from Mr. Doggenbaugh on yeah. exactly where we are on this, David? I know we we declare and then there is a process, but what would be the timeline on this? And have you worked at all with, with Dr. Dent on what he's trying to do? Good morning. Um, this is the commercial property. So just bear in mind, any permits that are required do require drawings and they need to work out with Buildmobile that process, which Thanks. is a little bit more in depth than residential. This is a commercial building. It is burnt. It's damaged significantly. So it may be a challenge to get to that point where he could get a building permit within 90 days or 60 days. Or he, so I, I would say let's let's take a step back. If the council as a whole would like to hold this over, no more than 60 days. But um, Mr. Reynolds is correct. If it's declared today, municipal enforcement, with it being a commercial building, we have to make some assessments before we can go for the demolition. Is there asbestos? Um, land disturbing permit. So there's going to be a process involved before we can even move forward. So we're looking three months down the road, maybe four, before we can actually have a contractor on site. So if you declare it today, there's still time for the owner to go through that process, determine it, does he want to demolish it, does he want to save it, get with the build mobile department, with his design professionals, apply for the permit, and go forward. So really, it, it, Mr. Reynolds is correct. If it's declared today, municipal enforcement of the city will take another three, four months or the owner could start the process today. Another question for Mr. Davis. Yeah. Is anyone else would like, as president I would like to address the said process? It'll be public here. Good morning. Good morning. Sabrina Mass, 1050 Belvedere Circle West. Um, yes, I would like to say something about the um, the property that you're talking about on government, 4,400 government. So my thing is, we why, why I feel like he should have some time because there was, a, um, during the height of the pandemic, everyone is aware of that. And also, if it's definitely, he's, I, I seem like he said something about veterans, um, helping veterans, and also the homeless. And... Um, we have people on the council that advocate for veterans and homeless. So I don't see why he cannot have an extension. And also, I'm not sure, but why not, does he not qualify for, for some of the ARP funding since, since he's trying to do it for a community project or, or some of the community reserve funding? Or even how about trying to organize, um, along with the minister, some um, the community maybe community volunteers as myself and others that wouldn't mind helping him um, try to get this um, project done um, if it's for 
the betterment of the veterans and the homeless. So I, I don't see why. And it, it, there are many places in Mobile that may be deemed to be demolished, but that doesn't mean it needs to be immediately done uh, unless it's um, at a point that it's, 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 it's going to be a, a problem to the safety of the public. Other than that, I don't see why the young man cannot have an extension. And like you said, President Smart, at least for 90 days to see where, where it goes. Thank you. Have a nice day. Is there anyone else present that would like to address the council on these said properties? First, I want to um, just read some comments from Carp Blackwell. He was having a, a medical procedure today and asked me if I would just share. Sir? Name and address. Oh, I'm sorry. Elizabeth Stevens, 261 Dolphin Street. Um, this, this is what Carp uh, asked me to communicate. This building is one of two 19th century, two standing 19th century buildings on the block, with the other building in a stark African American house of worship. The building is a testament to what was a thriving upper-class ethnic neighborhood. The neighborhood is revitalizing, and the restoration of this building would further the historic redevelopment of the area. The building is a rare example of a Victorian cottage on the northern end of the Himalayan Loop. Present-day codes for the area would all but preclude or certainly make difficult redevelopment of the site with anything other than a vacant lot, so therefore no tax base, voting residents, etc. I come before you today to ask, to respectfully ask you to not order the demolition of 650 St. Michael Street and to order it to be stabilized and sealed. There is no doubt from the pictures I took, I took the pictures Sunday, most of those pictures Sunday uh, on the first two pages, there's no doubt that the building needs to be stabilized and it needs to be addressed immediately. This building once renovated can again contribute to this neighborhood. It is not beyond, it is not beyond saving. It's just not. We've seen far worse be saved. In fact, in the, in the block to the east, in, in your packet is, is a, another little building that was nothing but a ruin just like this that was renovated, then the building next to that, a new building was built, and then the building across the street is currently under renovation. These seemingly tiny little buildings can have an amazing impact on the revitalization of an area. Likewise, these seemingly tiny little buildings when allowed to deteriorate can have a negative impact. But it's worse when we lose them. It's far worse when we lose them. You have the power to order it, and, and that's, what the, that's what the advertisement was, to order it, order it stabilized. There's also a process, the, uh, the CRC, as a process for demolition in the historic and in the downtown area. That process has also not been followed, and it, um, I would respectfully ask that that be followed as well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, Ms. Carroll, uh, I'm extremely aware that the permit that the owner tried to pull. Uh, was denied because of Bill Mobile and the DDD and the CRC being within the DDD. Uh, there's been uh, a, a quite a bit of dipoling uh, with the owner on this project back and forth on whether or not they were going to renovate or tear down or what, what process they were going to take. Um, I had some time to speak with uh, Mr. Dockenba, uh, the owner's lawyer, uh, who's present today, Ms. Priola Ruffin, and uh, a few before the meeting uh, today. And it's been recommended that I lay this over for uh, two weeks and let the owner uh, go through the Bill Mobile process along with the CRC and maybe have some additional conversations as to what they're going to actually do with the property. Um, so uh, when we get to that in the uh, agenda, I will ask that this be laid over for two weeks and uh, 
we uh, allowed them to go through the, the process with Build Mobile and the CRC uh, to uh, determine what's going to happen in the process in which we're going to take. Uh, uh, we're very aware that the CRC doesn't like to see these buildings come down, and that's why the permit was denied. However, as I said earlier, uh, property rights in this state are uh, tremendous. So we have to be extremely careful on how we proceed with this when the owner is looking to do one thing and there are rules in place for another. Thank you, Mr. President. Is anyone else present that would like to address the council on these particular set of items? Mr. President, uh, Mr. in reference to um, Mr. Carroll's comments, it would take Bill Mobile four weeks, not two weeks. That again, to be considered. It, Bill Mobile is saying they would need four weeks, not two. They would so, not be able to do it in two. Is that to go through the CRC process? It's correct. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. And we'll ask for a four week layover so that it can go through the process. Okay. Is anyone else present that would like to address the council on these particular said items? If not, these public hearings are closed. Presentation of petitions and other communications to the council. Sabrina Mass. Good morning, Sabrina Mass. 1050 Belvedere Circle West, Mobile, Alabama, 36606. Um, first of all, if I may, I would like to commemorate the um, 55th death of Dr. Martin Luther King um, Jr. today. Thank you. Um, I'm actually here to speak on the um, rules of procedure from the um, communication with the council, the rule of section 2-62, which was um, presented on t of last Tuesday. Um, and I have four subjects that I would like to speak about. The first two will be suppression and oppression. Um, as a citizen of Mobile, Alabama, and a citizen of the United States, I feel like, you know, the um, suppression and oppression of people speaking has um, really um, became a very big concern with the citizens of Mobile. We do feel, um, myself, and I speak for others that may not have a voice, but I do speak to the community, um, I feel like, you know, it, it, maybe, maybe you guys are not trying to suppress or oppress the voice of the people. Maybe you're not. But it seems that way. I mean, it, it has went from five minutes to three minutes, which, you know, I just speak fast. So it doesn't bother me three minutes. I can talk fast or I can talk slow. But some people do not have that, that, um, that talent, maybe, that they can. So suppression and oppression of the people is very real. We feel like the voices are being slaughtered and taken away little by little. I am definitely against changing it. And, and from my understanding, I don't understand why it has to be changed when it has calling the, the city clerk has not ever been a problem for, for years. It has not been a problem, and all of a sudden it's a problem. So I, I, I'm very concerned about that issue. I'm also concerned about, um, I, I heard one of, one of the council say um, a, a, a right to a, a, a abuse to speak. It, it is never abuse to speak in the United States of America. We are under the Constitution for freedom of speech and freedom of oppression, freedom of, uh, of, of, of all things. Consider the Constitution when you're making these rules and regulations, because I'm not going to ever stop speaking until God calls me home. So no, we have a right to speak. It is not an abuse to speak. You may not like the context. You may not like the content. But it is not abuse to speak. We listen to you when you speak. Listen to us when we speak. It's not personal, it's political. Separate the two and we make and go somewhere. Also, privilege. Let's talk about privilege. It is not a privilege for me to stand here and speak to anybody sitting in these seats. So let's stop saying it's a privilege. A privilege is, and I'm not trying to be rude, a privilege is when the people have elected you to sit in these seats to represent the people. That's a privilege elected by the people. It is a privilege for myself and others to go out here and work hard and pay checks. That's a privilege to you. I know my time is up. 
Uh, I'm going to sit down. Thank you. Ms. Thank you. Ash. Have a nice day. Yeah, and thank you so much for coming down. And, you know, pretty much on last week, you're down. I'm just going to okay. make a general statement. You know, many people took the meeting last week way further than what it should have been. And rumors went out that the council is trying to silence the people. The council is not trying to silence the people. The council is just trying to have a dignified and professional meeting. And so, therefore, we're just making sure that our rules pretty much is really tight and also make sure that the city clerk have the backing that she has and she needed and everything, you know, to make sure that our meetings are dignified and professional and making sure that citizens have a right to, to come down here and, you know, express their concerns and voices. But it was never the goal. And I will keep and I was, can stand and um, the representation of the rest of the six council members, it was never our goal to silence nobody. Our goal is to make sure that this meeting is carried out in a dignified and professional way. Madam Clerk, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Mr. Pien. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Mass, for coming down. Um, I always enjoy listening to the constituents, and you're correct. It's definitely a privilege for uh, constituents to take that time and, and vote um, as officials here. So I always, it's an honor. Even when people disagree with me or or say things about me, it, 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 I, it doesn't make me mad. I, I like to hear them, I like to listen, and, and I go back and look at myself and see what ways I can do to become better. Um, I believe, um, just kind of talk about some of the points you, you stated, um, it wasn't this council um, that changed the time from five minutes to three minutes, so um, just certain statements. Just want to make sure that that was already in place. Those that that, that time was already in place with this council when we got here. Um, that meeting, just like my colleague also stated, is that our goal is not to. We want to make sure we follow the guidelines and make sure that our clerk is prepared and we support our clerk. And so, looking over the our guidelines and our rules, we want to make sure that we implement it properly, and then making sure that we also taking care of our constituents. So our goal was to go over those guidelines and making sure that those things are in place so their voices can be heard and make sure that all those things are prepared. So because it's certain things that wasn't in place. So if we follow those rules to the T, then maybe people won't have a voice. So we want to make sure that we have those guidelines in place so everyone will have an opportunity to have their birth voice heard. So again, I enjoy always listen to the constituents come down and speak. So thank you so much for taking the time and, and coming down and, and sharing your concerns. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah, just I want to echo everything that y'all have said. I, I totally concur with. And to speak to the abuse specifically, that comes in the fact when somebody comes and well let, let's back up when they call the clerk <clears throat> and say they're going to speak on an issue that issue should be matter of fact it's mandated by the regulations and the rules to be about city business those things that this body can influence when somebody signs up with a topic that addresses that and then they get to the podium and talk about something that this body cannot deal with, that it's outside of city business, and they do it week after week after week, that is an abuse. And when you look around this room, everybody in here is taking time out of their busy schedules to be here. And they have a right to not have their time wasted. And that's what those rules are put in regulations and, and ordinances for so that everybody understands what happens when you get in front of that mic and you state your business and you leave. It's that simple. We're not trying to take away anybody's right to do that. We welcome the opportunity to communicate and I'll tell you, most of us, all of us, have a lot more communications on a daily basis than the folks that come down here. Telephone, email, personal visits, I mean, I've got communications ongoing hours a day 
Normally, I'm on the phone or email three or four hours a day, easy, not counting, going to people's houses looking at problems they have. So this isn't the only means of communication. And I think, you know, from what I've seen, I will tell you, I think this council is very aware of being transparent, open, and accessible to the constituents in the city. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Betty Shin. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Betty Shin, and I reside at 36 MacPhillips Avenue. I should say good morning, all. Uh, making Mo I'm talking about, and I'm here to speak about annexation and making Mobile bigger will not, in my opinion, make Mobile better. Having a greater population base equates to spending more money, especially on key areas of public safety and public services, which play a key role in governance. Uh, for historically neglected communities, the black, Negro, colored communities in the past indicate this lack will continue or be made worse with no funded needed for uh, the annex areas. Blacks are constantly told to look ahead, forget the past. Potholes, flooding streets, homelessness are not sufficiently addressed as annexation is now the concern for making one mobile a better place to live. Discuss it, discussions regarding annexation need to be transparent. More than the uh, four maps that I've seen, there's no mention of the cost how many employees, fire trucks, police cars, and SUVs, trash and garbage trucks, how many housing, houses in the annex area. I'm not concerned about, uh, I'm more concerned about current neglect, abandoned houses, overgrown lots, trash and garbage piled up in areas occupied primarily by black and poor people. Clean this up and young folk might want to live in Mobile rather than flee. Take care of the horrible position, uh, conditions that already exist. Abandoned properties scream of deeper problems. Piles of trash and garbage, homelessness, all scream of deep, deeper problems, deeper, more systemic problems. Annexation, in my view, is not the solution. We must work harder on taking care of existing problems. There are too many communities that have historically been neglected. I'm proud of the progress that has already been made, but visiting areas like Plateau, I'm shocked at the conditions that exist and have existed for as long as I can remember. Black communities reflect past and current injustices. I have to quote Dr. King that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Take care of the violations and the inequities of the past before annexing and spending money to expand. These communities are hurting, and I see the problems where annexation will eliminate, and I see no, no plans where annexation will eliminate or make these problems go away. We are already have to, we have to do better, and annexation for me is not the solution. Thank you. Thank you. Robert Battles. We're going to say good morning to the council. Good morning. Uh, this morning, I've chosen to come to speak about annexation and my opposition to annexation. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Oh, my name is Robert Battles. <laughs> I live at 269 North Broad Street, Mobile, Alabama. Thank you. I am a longtime resident of Mobile, and I come this morning to speak to you against uh, annexation. 50 years ago today, 
a little less than 400 miles down the road, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee. He went to Memphis, Tennessee to talk about the condition of sanitation work and the condition of people who live within that community. But then when I see annexation with my experience, when Mayor Sam Jones proposed annexation, I was against him. I was vocal against him because right now, I, I was looking at the TV last night and they said they did a study to compare annexation so that they can make some future plans. But if you really want to do a study, compare Mobile Terrace and the people who have already been annexed to Mobile and see what they have got to say. No one has tried to involve them in trying to determine and make. When I teach about reading comprehension, I can teach about compare and to contrast. When I compare, I, think, I tell how things are similar. When I contrast, I tell how things are different. But look at Mobile. I've been here 77 years. Davis Avenue is still run down. Tobinville is run down. Maysville is run down. This whole community. But yet still we want to annex into uh, 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 other people into our community. And then I, want, I got the Nation of Islam with me this morning, Brother Minister Muhammad. And what we're going to do is we're going to take up a vigil, and we're going to go over to, to uh, Emerson Garden. I wish you'd go over there, because we're going to bring you back some documentation to show you that while you talk about annexing people into the city of Mobile, you ought to look at the condition that my blind friend is living in over in Emerson Garden with roaches and rats and stains all on the wall. So I'd like to conclude today by telling you that the most important thing that you could do is listen to the citizens. And uh, Mayor Snuff and I have been friends for years. But they talk about one more bill, but I don't see no improvement. I don't see no improvement in Tobinville and down the Bay and in, in, in Maysville. But you talk about people act like crabs in a bucket. Crabs act like they do in the bucket because they're out there natural habitat. God made them for the war. But why don't you try to do the same thing and trying to focus on the quality of life for African Americans? And uh, by 2025, we will have us an African American mayor plus the majority on the city council. Thank you. Reggie Hill. Um, Reggie speaking regarding resolution 08364. Thank you, uh, Madam City Clerk. Greetings, everybody. Reggie Hill, 1007 Center Street. Um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., 55 years ago um, today, took his last breath uh, fighting against an archaic elitist structure for the equitable disbursement and distribution of the people's resources. Um, particularly uplifting those in the poor and underserved communities. In similar fashion, I rise today to address 08364. Um, I intend to, I intended rather, to present on annexation today, um, but after last week's pre-regular and committee meetings, the gestures, and I do not mean a comedy, have called me to speak on this matter today. Um, I want to emphasize the idea that simplicity creates absolute, irrefutable specificity. And today, the specifics are daunting expense to the tune of about $2.4 million. So in this presentation, I want to address the idea of speeding along the passage of these agenda items, properly vetting these agenda items, extensively evaluating these agenda items, strong arming the floor for these agenda items. And having a, a reputable background in the arts, I think the Finance Committee Chair might understand this as musicians would say, yeah, you're playing fortissimo, very loud and demanding, but you are missing the essence and true value of the dynamics for what is written in the piece. At hand, um, we have an opportunity to either get this right now or we do not. Let's look at the funding that's used. We transfer funds up here 
what is this weekly from one account, one budget to the next? Why can't we use resources like this into discretionary funding, into performance contracts to actually be proactive and fix the safety concerns that we have here? We also see the strong arm of the floor and saying, well, we can't go and direct people to do. But if you write it in an ordinance, I dare anybody to disobey it. This goes to the budgeting. We talk about the idea of extensively evaluating. But what, what, what do we have on the current motor pool? What do we have on the current motor pool? We're talking about extensively evaluating things. What do we have on the current motor pool? We're talking about properly vetting. We're talking about speeding along the passage. When have we gotten the vehicle inventory list? All these reasons that we want to suppress people, speeding up, speeding it up, properly vetting, extensively evaluating, strong arm on the floor. But yet this one example with $2.4 million is the exact thing you're trying to rebuke us from doing. Now, you know, we can take this personal, as something has been mentioned before, or we can look at it as a business. $2.4 million. And not to say that in the future we shouldn't go and get it. Not to say that we don't have the money to go and get it. But our priorities, they're out of place. And so there's always going to be that ill manner between us until we get it right. Thank you for you on the floor. Mr. President. Yeah, Mr. Jones. That $2.4 million everybody is tracking is for police vehicles. Our number one mission of this body is public safety of this city, period. No vehicles, no public safety. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. Jeff, two things. <clears throat> First thing is, when I was first running for office in 2013, I made it a point to do two ride arounds with police officers in the middle of the night, 12 hours. First cruiser I got into had 164,000 miles on it. Second cruiser had 134,000 miles on it. And, that, and, and, and our rolling stock, our police cruisers, our fire trucks, our dump trucks, we're all way past their expected service lives. And the mayor and the director of finance at that time, Mr. Wesch, put in a plan so that, so that we would have a sinking fund that would allow us to purchase new rolling stock at the end of their service life. And that plan has been very successful. And it's that plan that allows us to replace the rolling stock, including the police cruisers, including the fire trucks, including the dump trucks, including the garbage trucks. It has been a very successful plan. I am bitterly opposed not to follow through with that plan. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Ordinance is held over. 88006, ordinance approving a land exchange and authorizing execution of a land exchange agreement between the Board of School Commissioners of Mobile County and the City of Mobile. Six, oh, do I need to take these separately? No. 64015, amend Appendix A, Downtown Development District of the Unified Development Code, Chapter 64, the Mobile City Code, 2022. 64016, rezone property located at 6815 Cary Hamilton Road from RHI1. 34017, ordinance to levy taxes for this tax year beginning October 1, 2023, and for successive years on all real and personal property and intangibles located in certain areas within the corporate limits of the City of Mobile and to so accept moved. from with the tax. <laughs> So moved. And probably moving a second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? I don't pass. Consent resolutions held over 03339, concurring the reappointment to Mary Stewart Nelson to Alta Point Health Systems Inc. Board. So moved. Second. And probably moving a second in the discussion. Yeah, I'd like a uh, roll call vote on this, please. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Jones. Want to roll. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Madam Clerk. Um, did you accept the motion in second? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Um, President Small. Abstain. Hmm? Vice President Gregory. Uh, I have to abstain due to a personal conflict. Council Member Penn. Abstain. 
Council Member Carroll. Abstain. Council Member Reynolds. Abstain. Council Member uh, Dave. Yes. Council Member Jones. No. Uh, item fail. Item fail. Thirty-seven, thirty-seven, three, four, two. Recommend approval to the ABC board for issuance of a lounge retail liquor class one license to Busy Bee Hookah and Ice Bar Lounge. Move to hold over one week. And probably moving second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed. I'm laid over for one week. Resolutions held over. Thirty-seven. 834, approve a certificate of public convenience and necessity to Medivac, Alabama, Inc. to operate an ambulance service. So moved. Second. second. And probably moving second in discussion. Yes, sir, Mr. President. Mr. Reynolds. I'd like to offer an amendment that's on file with the clerk's office regarding the time frame for this certificate. Uh, let me get it, limiting it to one year. Second. And probably moving second in discussion on the amendment. All in favor on the amendment? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Going back to the original and other discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item passed. 08359, approved purchase orders for fuel for the Wave Transit. 08360, approved purchase order to Sunbelt Fire for bunker gear. 08361, approved purchase order to Empire Truck Sales for concrete trucks for public services maintenance. 08362 approved purchase order from CDW government for annual renewal of net motion network mobility software. 08363 approved purchase order to Insight Public Sector for 65 elite book laptops. 08364 approved purchase order to Stark Motor Cars for 40 Chevrolet Tahoe police package SUVs. 09365 allocate funds from the Stormwater Fund to Capital Project Municipal. Storm water fees project for various projects. 09366 allocate funds for capital improvement reserve to capital project I 65 and I 10 lighting improvements. 21367 authorize change order with inline LLC for LED fixture replacements for interstate street lights. 21368 authorize contract with Texas Tech for disaster debris removal, monitoring, and consulting services. 21369 authorized contract with Kimberly Horn and Associates Inc. for engineering services for transportation planning study for game day and special events at the University of South Alabama. 21317, authorized contract with Dell Consulting LLC for electrical upgrades at Copeland Cox Tennis Center. 25371, grants permanent and temporary easements to the Mobile Area Water and Sewer System for a Sovereign Creek Trunk Sewer Upgrade. So moved. Second. No problem moving second and in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Item passes. Consent resolutions being introduced. 37373 through 6383. Move for move to waive the rules for immediate consent to consider each of these resolutions as read. Second. No problem moving second and in the discussion. Yeah, can we take 40-380 separate, please? Yeah. 40-380? Right. This is just to waive the rules. We're at discussion. In our discussion. Uh, yeah, Mr. President, 40-378 will be laid over for well, four we'll weeks. Take, so can we'll we take, take it take separate, separate off? Yeah. Yeah. In our discussion, we're the rules. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Mm -hmm. Rules are waived. So I'm taking three. 78 and 380 separately? Yes. Yes. Okay. 37373, 374, 375, and 376 are recommended and approved to the ABC Board for issuance of a restaurant retail liquor license for Sideways Restaurant on Spring Hill Avenue, for issuance of a retail beer table wine off premises only license for Piggly Wiggly on Navco Road, for issuance of a retail beer table wine off-premises only license to Apash Food Mart on Government Boulevard, 
And for issuance of a retail beer table wine, our firm is only licensed for AFASH Food Mart on Cottage Hill Road, 4377 and 379, are declaring the structures at 282 Laurel Drive, 928 Nelly Street, 4381, um, 5500 Kaiser Court, public nuisances and ordering them, them demolished. 6382 and 383 are determining appropriations to future leaders working and O'Shell Road School of Creative and Performing Arts serve a public purpose in approving payment. So moved. Second. No problem moving second in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I don't pass. 4378 declare the structure at 650 St. Michael Street a public nuisance in order it demolished. A motion to lay over four weeks. Second. No problem moving second and in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I'm laid over for four weeks. 4380, declare the structure at 4400 Government Boulevard, a public nuisance and order it demolished. So moved. Second. No problem moving second and in discussion. Mr. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Penn? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, I want to pass it in. Thank you, Barry, you know, for coming down. Um, Anytime this type of property, I always lead to the council representative. Um, they've been receiving the phone calls. They've been dealing with the, the constituents in that area. So I always point back to, to that, that council representative. That's just something I always do because I know what I receive in that area. So just want let to let the people know that on record. Thank you. Um, Mr. President. Uh, Ms. Gregory. <clears throat> we generally do. Uh, give a nod to the council representative in that area. Sometimes it doesn't go that way. Sometimes uh, we do vote differently. Um, I would like to be able to give you more time. I just don't know that that is the will of the council or the representative from that area. Um, I know Mr. Doggenbaugh has said that once we move forward with declaring the property, you still have time. Um, I don't know if, if we gave you 60 days, if that would be enough time for you to do what you need to do. I would like to think it would be, um, because I know the good work that you all are doing, uh, along with Ransom Ministries, and saving buildings is always more important than, than demolishing them. But again, uh, I just don't know at this juncture if it is the will of the council to try to uh, change anything to give you any more time. And also, I will be... Uh Staying in my vote also on this one. Um, I like to follow the council, you know, who person that represent that particular district and everything, but I also hear the citizen, you know, asking for additional time. And uh, as Ms. Gregory has stated, you know, we know the work, but I know the work that you all do in the community. Um, so that's why I would love to give you, you know, that time. But again, the council representative, it was just really want this to go forth. So um, I will be abstaining my vote on this particular matter. Mr. President. Mr. Uh, President. Uh, Mr. Reynolds and Mr. Carroll. I, too, appreciate the work that Ransom Ministry does. And I appreciate you coming down to <clears throat> advocate for your property. What, would, what we didn't hear today were the hundreds, if not thousands, of people that live in this immediate area that routinely have to deal with this problem that's sort of prolonged over a number of years. And um, I hear from them. Uh, I'm sure city officials hear from them routinely. And this doesn't close the door on, on you making some immediate, taking some immediate action. We've heard from the city that they're willing to, to work with you. But instead of granting 90 days now and then declaring it then and then waiting another three or four months for the city to do it citizens have suffered another year if nothing happened so that's why i'm so adamantly uh, in favor of moving forward with the legal process of declaring the structure at public nuisance and i'd hope my council people would join me in that mr chair um, Mr. President, as I said earlier today, uh, uh, I am definitely in favor of granting the time. I'll be joining you and 
uh, outstanding on this issue. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Jones. Yeah, the issue that I have, we have a lot of people that come down and they have visions and they have aspirations, but what they don't have are plans. And the owners had this for two years. And what we didn't hear today is the cost estimate on what this is going to take to get back to where it needs to be. What we didn't hear today is who he's already collaborated with to try and get to that point. He's had two years. What we didn't hear today is some of the possible investors that he has. Um, you know, the city cannot be responsible for every dilapidated building that, that we have on this list every week. And I hear that a lot. Well, why can't we use ARPA funds? Why can't we use city funds? It's not a city responsibility to fix up these buildings. We don't have the wherewithal financially to do that. And then the last thing I'll say is, you know, this, this is Councilman Reynolds' district. And he is the one that has made a recommendation, and we have supported routinely. The council representative has to deal with the issue in these specific issues. So I'll, speak, I'll be supporting Councilman Reynolds in this way. Another discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Abstain. Abstain. What was the vote on that? To declare. Oh, no, no. How, I'm a whole, so how many how many eyes, how many nays, and how many abstentions? I have, I have two abstentions. Why don't we, let's have a voice vote. Let's have a voice vote. President Small. Abstain. Vice President Gregory. Abstain. Council Member Penn. Aye. Council Member Carroll. Abstain. Council Member Reynolds? Aye. Council Member Daves? Aye. Council Member Jones? I don't fail. Um, question, Mr. Reynolds, would you, do we bring this back up and just hold off for 60 days or just let it go? The item has failed. We can make a motion to reconsider, I believe. Um, I that's what I'm Lee. asking. Uh, it has to be made, I think, by someone who voted against it. Yeah, the against team has to make a motion to reconsider. Uh, Which you, with, you with abstain, the possible so. amendment. So um, it was it went down four three. So, clerk. I, I, Mr. President, I, I have an objection to holding this for sixty days. Um, you know, in order to get you all to support me in my district. You know, I don't mind holding it for some time, uh, but 60 days is too long for the citizens of District 4 to wait. So um, if, if we need to hold it a couple of weeks so that maybe maybe you all can ride by there and, and go check out the building yourself, and maybe I can have some constituents reach out to you. So does two weeks work for you all? Could I ask uh, Mr. Reynolds, what about 30 days and see if we've seen a progress between now and 30 days from now? Would that be suffice? Uh, you know, I, I think it's, uh, if, if that's what the citizens of District 4 have to wait on, then, you know, in order to get the votes required, then I, I don't really have much of an option here. So, you know, if, if you'd like to make a motion to hold it, you know, 30 days, I, I won't object. A motion to reconsider. Oh, I guess I can't make that motion. Uh, I, I keep hearing uh, he's had two years to solve this problem. Did the city approach him two years ago? Uh, uh, all right, so let's say this. I've got numerous properties in District 2 that have been in disrepair for 30 years. I've got some that have been sitting there for five and 10 years. Uh, did the city approach them at that time? I've got some where people have owned buildings for 50 years that have been sitting there so how we, I mean, to make the statement that he's had it for two years when other people have had properties for a whole lot longer than that, that have been in disrepair, that we were granted additional time to seems kind of somewhat out of line. Now, I mean, if, 
if he's asking and he's asking on true merit and he wants to correct it, then he owns it, then I think we should at least give him the opportunity to try instead of just tearing it down. Uh, that's all I'm saying. Mr. Dave. Yeah, in my memory, this is unprecedented. But what the council has done today is unprecedented. There may have been some time in the past when the council acted against uh, the councilman in whose district the property was located. I can't recall it. Um, as, as Councilman Penn correctly pointed out, it's Councilman Reynolds who is getting the heat on this subject. And, and to, to so, so if we're going to depart from what is clearly our practice, to defer to the councilman whose district the property sits, then we ought to have a really good reason for doing it. And in my mind, the really good reason is not because we know the person who owns the property and likes them. There has to be a better reason than that. that I, I'm not finished. Go ahead. I, I'm, I'm very skeptical that we're going to be sitting here two weeks from now, 30 days from now, 60 days from now, 90 days from now, and we're going to be presented with a clear-cut plan to restore this property. Thank you. Um, on issues of Mr. Nuisance. President, all this discussion is out of order. There's, there's a motion on the floor. On, on issues of nuisance abatement, uh, I could cite several uh, probably more than three or four, where there has been crossover in, from district to district and involvement and recommendation that we vote against the recommendation of the council person representing that district since I've been back on this council. Mr. President, so there's that, no that, item on the that, floor that, up for discussion. That would be, that would be an invalid uh, uh, statement. However, I do believe in that practice, as I have said before. I, you know, I wish that we could continue to do that. But we, uh, or some of us, have not truly recognized that practice uh, with this council as it as we go. Uh, council, um, there's a motion on the floor to reconsider. Yeah, it needs to come from the government side. There is no dissenting party. It failed four to zero. So this is absolutely in order. Let's hear from my attorney. Under the rules, a motion to reconsider has to come from the prevailing side. Uh, in this case, I think it would have to come from one of the abstentions. If I may recommend to the president of the council, I think Councilman Reynolds might be in order if he were to offer a motion to suspend the rules and allow him to offer the motion to reconsider. Motion to suspend the rules in order to offer a motion to reconsider. Second. second. And proper moving second in the discussion. All in favor to suspend the rules. Aye. 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 All opposed. Rules suspended. Motion to lay over 30 days. Second. And proper moving second in the discussion. All in favor. Aye. 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 All opposed. Item passed. Resolutions being introduced, 01384 through 21392. Move to waive the rules for immediate consideration of 08-385 with the rest of these resolutions as read being laid over for one week per council rules. Second. And probably moving second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? 08385, approved item based bid for printing and mailing of postcards. So moved. Second. And popped the moving second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Item passed. Call for public hearings 41393. Call for public hearing to consider approval of a certificate of public convenience and necessity to the way to go Inc to operate a sedan and shuttle service scheduled April the 18th. So moved. Second. And proper moving second in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Public hearings called. 
announcements. Uh, District 4, Councilman Reynolds. No announcements. District 1, Councilman Penn. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, tonight we will have an um, event at Figures Park. People are united to advance the dream. They will have a citywide prayer to stop the violence. It will be from 5 to 6.30. They will have food. Um, and it starts again at 5 o'clock to 6.30. And then this Saturday we have Spring Fling family fun time this Saturday, April the 8th, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Dots Community Center in the Trenton Gardens community. We have a petting zoo, Easter bunny photos. The Easter egg um, hunt starts at 11 a.m. They will have for um, different age groups. So come out, bring your family, bring your kids, um, have a great time in District 1. But it's not just for District 1, it's for the city of Mobile. So come out and let's have a great time um, for spring clean um, at the Trenton Gardens Park. And then April the 14th, we will have our Tomaville Neighborhood Cleanup Day um, with Mayor Stimson leadership team and myself. Um, meet us at Figures Park on Donna Street at 745. We're inviting the church, all the churches, um, neighborhood community leaders, um, all the businesses in District 1 in the Tomaville community. Everyone is welcome to be a part. This is going to be one of the biggest cleanup days. So come out, be a part of this. Um, we have been doing our neighborhood um, um, development meetings in the Tomaville community. And this is one of the things that we want to show um, that we really, truly care about meeting with our community. They want to see a difference. They want to see that community clean. And so this is one of the things that we're doing. And many more things to come. We're creating a plan for the Tomaville community, and we believe that this is going to be an example to move forward, not just in the Tomaville community, but throughout the city of Mobile. Um, so come out on April the 14th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, thank you. Uh, District 6, Councilman Jones. Thank you, Mr. President. Kudos to the Mobile Ballet uh, for putting on their rendition of Swan Lake. I don't know if you're able to go out there or not, but it was extremely well done, very professional. Uh, with some principals from from Texas that came in and it was just absolutely phenomenal so hats off to all of uh, those that participated and had a role in that it's always a pleasure to support that organization Thomas Sowell said when you want to help people that you tell them the truth when you want to help yourself you tell them what they want to hear we had two proclamations this morning talking about sexual assault and how we stand against it it's funny how every time I talk about Alta Point in this setting, I get a phone call shortly thereafter with another abuse that has happened at that organization. The same thing happened this past week. Cannot continue to sit on this council that allows an environment that creates the conditions for this abuse to continue defends those actions, and then funds the organization where those actions exist. That allows for the abuse of the most vulnerable among us, and yet we sit here and do nothing. I've laid out facts numerous times of those abuses. I've gone to committee meeting. Members on this council have tried to shut down parents that have just tried to simply state the problems that they have. We have the ability to impact change, yet we refuse to do that as a city council, as a county commission, and as city leadership. And we saw that just the end of this week. It's absurd to sit in a relationship and you know that the individual in that relationship is abusive, yet you just ignore it. How many of us would have friends that, that hits his wife or breaks their children's arms and say, that's okay? I'm still going to go out and fellowship with you, and I'm going to let that go. I'm going to ignore it. That's exactly what city leaders are doing when it comes to the issues I've discussed. I cannot change that. That's been absolutely evidently clear. But I can refuse to sit here and be a party to it. For these reasons and a few more that I will say at a later date, 
I'm resigning my position to city council. I'm not resigning from service. I'm just changing the positions from where I serve. I will not be making any public comments until further notice. Thank you. Uh, District 2, Councilman Carroll. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, um, last Wednesday, I met with the committee uh, that was established to take a look at the MHDC ordinance uh, and its compliance with the state of Alabama, but also to make sure that the Preservation Society uh, had a true transparent look at it as to what we can do uh, to enhance it, to accept it, and to make sure that everything within it allowed for some of the structure within it, the MHDC to remain in place. I think we had a great, great meeting for about two hours. Uh, we've got some things uh, on paper that we'll be submitting soon. Uh, we have a follow-up meeting scheduled for this week. Uh, date uncertain now. I changed a little bit via text while we're in a meeting. I'll let everyone know what that date is. Uh, also, um, everybody write this date down in District 2. April 18th will be our day to discuss the PFM study. April 18th, 6 p.m., we will notify everyone of the exact place to make sure we have the adequate size in the room to discuss it. April 18th, 6 p.m., to discuss the PFM study. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Uh, District 5, Councilman Daves. District 7, Vice President Gregory. No announcements. And greetings to the citizens of District 3 on this coming Thursday, April the 6th at 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, we will have a meeting at the Revelation uh, Baptist Church, which is located in the uh, Maysville community. Uh, we will be talking about housing, upgrading the Maysville, Oakdale community, and some other uh, actions. Again, inviting all the citizens in the Oakdale and also the Maysville community to please come out this coming Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m., April the 6th at the Revelation um, Baptist Church. Also, this coming Saturday, uh, April the 8th, um, from 3 p.m. to 5 o'clock p.m., at the Gear York Elementary School, we will have our annual Easter egg hunt. Uh, this is going to be brought to you by uh, members of the uh, uh, Delta Sigma Theta and also members of uh, Kappa Alpha Psi and some other groups. And again, this is our annual Easter egg hunt, inviting all the kids and in the district to come out on this coming Saturday, again, from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Gear York Elementary School. Uh, we'll have plenty of food, fun, and entertainment. And of course, the Easter Bunny will be present on April the 20th, which is a Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Riverside Baptist Church. Uh, we invited all the residents, especially in the South VIP community, to uh, come out and we'll be talking about the TIF. I'm um, inviting all the businesses and the residents to uh, come out. And again, that will be held on Thursday, April the 20th at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Riverside Baptist Church, which is located on Dolphin Island Parkway. And again, we're inviting all the residents to come out and business owner along Dolphin Island Parkway. Is there anything else from this council? Anything from the administration? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Good morning. Just want to invite you all, we are hosting with the county, Alabama Power, um, the Education Foundation, which is Excel. Um, tomorrow we'll be hosting the I Lead Youth Summit that'll be at the co uh, convention center. So if you have time to stop by, we already have uh, 400 kids that's registered and it's for all of the high school students um, in the city of Mobile. That's all, thank you. What time is it? It starts at 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Then it goes to 12. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Motion adjourned. Second. And probably moving second in discussion. All in favor?